Okay, so there's a big update for Raspberry Pi OS. So let's have a look at it. What I'm going to do is flash a fresh copy to this NVMe drive. So let's pop that inside. So I've also got an SSD plugged in by USB. So let's boot that up and we'll start tapping the space bar to go into the boot menu. There we go. And we're going to boot from USB, which is number four. So let's launch Raspberry Pi Imager, choose device, Raspberry Pi 5, choose OS. So the new story was from the 7th of May and this is the 6th of May version. Choose storage, this is my NVMe drive, hit next. I'm not going to make any changes and yes. Pop the password in and we'll come back when that's all done. This operating system is based on Raspberry Pi OS, uh, so I've applied all of the updates to it. Uh, I'll make a download available but Chromium is broken with YouTube at the moment. When you go and try and play video, it's white. I've had that problem before, and either disabling hardware acceleration or switching to X11 desktop usually fixes it. I'm gonna see if there's a better fix, but this video is more about the new version of Raspberry Pi OS, so I'll cover that in a separate video. Okay, that's all finished, so let's hit continue. I'm gonna shut this down. And then I can unplug the SSD. So this is what I was running the operating system from, but I've written it to the NVMe drive that's in here. So now, if we just switch on, that will boot from the NVMe drive. A fresh copy of Raspberry Pi OS. It usually boots twice while it's sorting out the partition. So rebooting now. And it actually came up with an error then when it was starting up, but it looks like it's gone past it. Yeah, welcome to the Raspberry Pi desktop. To install the screen so let's hit next to do the first time days. installation and pick all the right regional options. Pick a username and a password and I'll log on to my Wi-Fi and I'm going to use the Chromium browser. And we'll let it update the software if there is any. Yeah, it's downloading some and installing. System up to date. So let's do restart. And let's go through the changes. So there was an official story on the Raspberry Pi news site. So this one here. So we just published a new version of Raspberry Pi OS for all Raspberry Pi computers. And you can update an older version. Uh, so if we go down the bottom here, yeah, just sudo apt update and sudo apt full upgrade, but it shouldn't do anything for me. So if I do control alt T to open a terminal and let's paste that in, yeah all up to date. So we go back up to the top. Debian Linux works on a two year release cycle. Every odd numbered year a new major version is released and it being 2025 there will be a new one in the next few months. So this will probably be the final release uh, which is based on Debian Bookworm before the new one Trixie is released this summer. So screen locking. We've installed a modified version of the Swaylock screen locking application. Anyone who has used Swaylock will be familiar with its somewhat minimal interface. When you lock the screen, you just get a completely white screen with no indication of what has happened or what you need to do. We felt this was a bit unhelpful, so we've added a custom front end which gives a bit more feedback as to what is happening and what you need to do to unlock again. You can now lock the screen by pressing Control alt l or by choosing shut down. So let's do that. Control alt l Okay, <laughs> weren't they saying it was a more helpful screen? Uh, okay, well I'll just put my password in. The custom front end which gives a bit more feedback. So this version hasn't been updated. So let's see, Control alt l doesn't do anything because this is the older version. But if we get a shutdown, which on this three and a half inch screen, you have to let it scroll down to what happens. So if I go log out, Oh, okay, so it drops you back into the terminal. So yeah, I guess that is, you don't know how to get back into a desktop environment. But if you type in start X, that brings you back into the desktop environment. So auto login options. In Linux desktops, it's usually possible to access a command line console known as TTY by pressing Control alt and one of the function keys from one to seven. We've always set up Raspberry Pi desktop. So if you boot to the desktop, and enable auto login, then the TTY on the controller F1 is also automatically logged in. 
If you use the screen lock described above, this potentially gives a security hole as the TTY switches are not disabled when the screen is locked. What this means, if you lock the screen, you should need to enter the password to be able to access the Pi desktop again. But if a TTY is also logged in, someone could just hit Control alt f one So let's try that. So Control alt l to log out. But then Control alt f one So yeah, I'm back in. So if I do sudo apt install psensor, yeah, I have access and I can install things without having to add, put a password in. So obviously you can do all sorts of things from there. Uh, if I do start X, will that get me back to the desktop? Okay. No. So not the same as the other. What have I got? Terminal emulator, web browser, obconf, reconfigure, restart. So what happens if I try terminal from there? Nothing. Uh, restart. Oh, it gives me a menu, but it doesn't really do anything. Right, so Control Alt F1, F2. Oh, no, it did do it. So it wants me to log in now. My username and my password. So I don't know the other way to get back into that, so I'm just going to do reboot. And I'm rebooting, I'm getting that error again, XHC CMD error for type 11. But it does seem to be working fine, but it does take a bit longer to boot. So if anybody knows how to launch the graphical user interface back from terminal, as it's not start X on this updated system, maybe it's not been for a while, I'm trying to think when I last did it, I was probably doing it on uh, switching between RetroPie and a desktop environment, so I probably haven't done it for quite some time. So let's change that setting. So if I call up the web browser again, and let's restore that page. So we go to Preferences and Raspberry Pi Configuration. And it's just much safer to turn both of these off uh, because it means that your Pi boots up and requires a password on boot. So we'll say OK to that. You can access it as well with Raspberry Config, so sudo raspi-config because the graphical version doesn't have everything in it so this version is a bit more basic this version has loads more elements in it it's just not quite as intuitive to use this is obviously super simple console auto login desktop auto login so let's shut down and restart ah, I reckon this is the screen I should have been getting earlier on so you can see I've got login details and space for a password and it's got shutdown and login so that's a bit more intuitive yeah that takes me to the desktop perfect right what else is there and it is very snappy it's worth mentioning that Linux on a Raspberry Pi especially a Raspberry Pi 5 is so solid so the performance is just excellent on it. it's a real pleasure to use that can't be said the same on lots of other uh, single board computers and devices that use Linux, they just aren't as as complete, they aren't as full, they aren't as, they're not as they just not as reliable and they're not as well put together. That Raspberry Pi do a very, very good job of this operating system. And my version of KDE, I'm really pleased with that. I really use that as, a, as my desktop environment on a, on a regular basis over Raspberry Pi OS, just because I want extra things like window snapping and quicker launching and, and a bit more features in my operating system. But the great thing about Raspberry Pi OS is it works across all the devices and is very lightweight, very responsive and super reliable. So next up we have a new printers application and to access that we go to the preferences tab and printers and you can see it comes up nice and straightforward. It had already detected my printer, I actually recorded this bit earlier on and my mic was plugged into a different device so it didn't capture the audio so I'm doing this again but all I did was do use printer by default and it put a little green tick by it but it had actually detected the printer. So now if I do control P it comes out with a very straightforward printer menu. You can see that one's uh, selected by default and I've got all the different options and portrait and landscape. And we've got more settings here as well. Very simple, very straightforward. To connect to and control printers, we have been shipping the system config printer application, which is a Python application with a slightly quirky and untidy user interface. For this release, we ported the printer control plugin from the GNOME desktop 
control center into a standalone printer's application, along with fixing a few of GNOME's more puzzling user interface decisions. Uh, touch screen. Let's plug it into the Dope Display laptop. So this is for touch screen mouse and keyboard support, mini HDMI for video and power. The laptop powers itself and the battery seems to last forever. Even if I don't use it for a couple of months, I turn it on and it's still pretty much full. And I can actually use the on-screen keyboard. So what was it saying about it? So we go back into the browser and restore. Touchscreen handling in Wayland is relatively new, sometimes doesn't do everything you might hope. We hit a problem when we first moved to Wayland in that some touch features like the ability to double click were simply not available and we had to find a workaround. What we did was to enable mouse emulation by default, whereby touchscreens just pretended to be mice. When you tap on the touchscreen it generates a mouse click instead of a touch. And if you tap twice it generates a double click. The problem with this is that it meant that the touch specific features like swiping the screen to scroll were disabled and some people would notice their absence. Oh, okay. For this release, we're making it easy for touchscreen users to choose whether they want mouse emulation behavior or native touchscreen behavior. There is a new menu under touchscreen section on the context sensitive menu in screen configuration. So screen configuration was in preferences. Yeah, screen configuration. And so if I tap on the screen and screens, HDMI, touch screen. So it says wing hall touch is enabled. And then we've got mouse emulation and multi-touch. Well, let's, let's see what it's like at the moment without changing anything. So, oh, okay. So, so you, can, you see I can't scroll what I naturally tried to do, like I would do on a Chromebook or a Windows laptop, is scroll up and scroll down. And you can see it's not doing that. So I need to go back into preferences, screen configuration, and HDMI, touch screen, and change that mode to multi-touch, apply, and okay. Right, so what happens now? Yeah, that's what we want. That's actually a major change. I'm actually really pleased about that. So if we pick a page with lots of information on it, say something like Hot UK Deals. In fact, what I should have done was see what happens with the on-screen keyboard, but let's launch that first of all. And you can see it's loading up, except, yeah, nice. Pinch to zoom, all of that exactly as you want it. So what does that mean with files then? So if I go into documents, so I double tap then, maybe I was supposed to press and hold. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing now. Double tap, double tap desktop. How do I get into a folder? Unless I'm doing it down here, which I can do. So I need to look at that again. So what happens now if I try and type? Okay, so the keyboard doesn't come up, but the keyboard is up here. Yeah, so you can enable the keyboard, so BBC Sport and to hide the keyboard. Yeah, it's definitely an improvement. It definitely needs a lot of work compared to something like Chrome OS or Windows. Both work really well with touchscreen and, and give you a desktop environment, but also a touchscreen experience that's that's a bit more sort of solid, I would say, but that's definitely a nice change, especially for some custom things that you would use a touchscreen for, where you can pick the mode that's gonna be more uh, useful for what you're using it on. So if we think of that three and a half inch screen I was showing earlier on, that could possibly really benefit from that. The main disadvantages of no longer using mouse emulation is that it isn't possible to double click by tapping the screen twice. Oh, okay. <laughs> I found that out, and this makes navigation in the file manager rather difficult. There are a couple of workarounds specific to the file manager. You can enable open files with a single click in the file manager preferences, or use a tap and hold to open the context sensitive menu and then choose open. I didn't find that came up for me, but the single tap definitely is worth looking at. Enable open files with a single click in the file manager preferences. Okay, so it's not in there. So is it, so you open file manager and tools and preferences. Oh, I'm gonna use the mouse for this. Because I'm behind the camera, it makes it more awkward to use. So go, file, 
preferences. Open files with a single click. Oh, okay. Maybe I was being dramatic. Yeah. Perfect. Happy with that. That definitely works. I'm going to close this down rather than use touch. I'm going to use the mouse to close that down. Hopefully at some point while then touchscreen support will be mature enough that it's no longer necessary to offer this option. But in the meantime, this lets users choose their preferred behavior. Yeah, definitely a good advantage. So great work by everybody involved in this. Hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.